it's Mike with Ugtastic. I'm here at GoToConf 2014. I'm sending you here with Camille Fournier, who gave a talk about uh, the great rewrite, or, well, if you should, maybe it's not so great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, should you have a rewrite? Oh, well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. So your talk, uh, the... Well, can you, what was the title of it again? It was, So You Want to Rewrite That. So You Want to Rewrite That. Okay, so it sounds like a little bit of pain yeah. to, to get to that. So can you share a little bit about yeah. what, what your experience was? Sure. So um, I just led Run the Runway through a big rewrite of our legacy sort of ugly Drupal system yeah. into a you know Ruby front-end, Java SOA back-end yeah. um, platform. Before, I want to ask Rent the Runway. Yes. What is, what is that real quick? Rent the Runway is rentherunway.com. Okay. Um, we are a e-commerce website. We do designer dress and accessory short-term rentals to women. Okay. Um, and we are actually, you know, you may, you are not our target demographic, <laughs> but uh, probably you There's know someone that at least knows of us or even has used us. We have okay. many, many customers throughout the United States. Okay. okay. So you were saying that you had a Drupal application yeah. that you rewrote into a Java SOA mm -hmm. architecture. And then I interrupted you. Yes. Uh, right. So, you know, I basically joined the company when we were first starting to think about this rewrite mm -hmm. and led the team through it. And it took us about, well, it took us about two, a little more than two years to get to all of the major consumer facing, mm -hmm. customer facing pages out of Drupal. Um, we still have administrative mm -hmm. pages in Drupal. So this experience is really interesting for me because it just got me interested in why do people rewrite? What makes them successful? What doesn't make a rewrite successful? Mm -hmm. I think every software engineer is going to have to rewrite something at some point in their right. career. Probably at some point you're going to do one of these really big rewrites. So how do you think about it? What are the principles you should think about in going into this process to hopefully make it more successful? Because yeah. rewrites tend to come from a place of failure, right? You're failing in some way or you see that you're going to fail in some way. It's mm -hmm. failures on the horizon. Um, and so you know, it's very easy for a rewrite itself to fail because you're already in precarious, you know, in a precarious place. How do you, you know, think about it to make it successful? Okay. And so it sounded like you did a, a gradual evolutionary kind of iteration away from this, this monolithic architecture. You didn't just gut yeah. the system and then replace it. In yeah. Order. Yeah. Um, yes. I would say that the number one thing that we did right was we did a very iterative, slow rollout. So we would take logic that was in Drupal, we would move it into Java and put the put that behind API calls in Drupal. And we did this for sort of core data and then core business logic. And then once we had done a sort of a good chunk, we started moving pages in Drupal out of Drupal and into Ruby. So we built our Ruby layer in such a way that it was a very thin client. It wasn't talking to the database in the way that our Drupal had been. It wasn't this sort of complex, you know, ball of wax. It was simply calling to Java services to get JSON data and, you know, maybe doing a little munging of that and showing it on the web page. So the one thing coming from a cultural um, community aspect is that there's a strong identity uh, or tends to be a strong identity in the PHP community and a strong identity in the Java community. Mm -hmm. I'm a Java developer. I'm a PHP developer. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're saying to the PHP developers, hey, we're going to be taking your stuff and rewriting in Java, how did you kind of smooth the waters with that? Yeah. Well, for, so. And avoid like insult, like, oh, yeah. PHP. Yeah. No, I mean, I think that's, I think that's a great question. And, you know, for better or worse, we just, you know, we had lost a lot of the original developers of Rent the Runway over the years, you know, had been written by an outsource team and then in-house. And I was not, you know, in great technical shape because it had had so many owners that the team that was there writing the PHP, they were not so in love with the yeah. PHP. They weren't emotionally invested. They weren't as emotionally invested. But they were mostly like exhausted because yeah. they were supporting this thing that kept breaking. So. I think in their minds, anything to make their support burden a little mm -hmm. bit easier and you know take care of some of this complexity and allow them to focus more on getting features out more quickly. I think the real thing is that developers want to ship. For the most part, developers right. really care about shipping, especially at a company like Rent the Runway. And so our rewrite was always sold to them as this will let you ship faster, better, you know, with much less pain. And and it did that. And I think that helps with that. And, uh, you know, coming here to GoToConf, uh, the presentation you, you wrote, was it 
based off of your strictly off of your experiences at Rent the Runway, or have you felt this pain before? And are you reflecting your yeah. previous experiences? So I have only felt this pain to some extent before. I had never done a major rewrite like this. I had done a lot of actual like sort of refactors in place where mm -hmm. I think with well, a different team would have resulted in a major rewrite that may or may not have been successful. Um, but I actually talked to a lot of colleagues and friends outside of the company um, that I knew had either done rewrites, considered rewrites, not and not done them. Um, I read a lot of stories and a lot of articles by people who had you know, successfully or, you know, not successfully done rewrites, because I think that this is a common thing. You know, developers do this at some point in their career. And so I wanted to get more perspectives other than my own as to why people do this and what makes them successful or not. And I just to kind of wrap up, are, are any resources that you read or, 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 or how did you maybe look outside of, of, of your own experiences to, uh, to uh, get more information about how to, to approach this? Did you read like, the refactor book or, or anything like um, that? I mean, I, I read, what did I read? So I read some blog posts. There's some mm -hmm. blog posts, actually, it's really interesting. About like six or seven or eight years ago, there was sort of a flurry of don't rewrite that right. um, blog posts, which are really interesting and actually worth reading. I think, you know, these things come in cycles. People write about them and then we all forget. <laughs> and then we all make a bunch of mistakes and then we relearn about them. Um, so I read a bunch of those. I read a little bit about the... You know, Twitter has a pretty good blog post about their rewrite, and I also talked to people that were there um, and worked through that. Um, I did a lot of talking to friends, too. Okay. So, so reaching out and just Reaching out, asking people. yeah, and just asking people, like, for their experiences. If you know someone who's been a software developer for 15 or 20 years, you probably know someone that's done this scene that's been around for this and has some opinions. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. Appreciate thank you. User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way! Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.